Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Lily Reads. Okay, so in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be reading some queer YA. I think it is so important for children to have representation in books and I think it's so important that they are still writing queer novels about young adults, about children in high school and all the stuff that they are going through. I think this is one of the most important sections of literature that is being written right now with all of the books being banned, with everything that's going on in states like Florida and Tennessee and all of that stuff. It is so important for books about gay people, gay children to be on the shelves, to be written so that people who are younger can see themselves in books and also with the three books we're going to read in this video people of different complexions people of different ethnicities people from different backgrounds all seeing themselves in stories and just getting contemporary stories about what they are experiencing feeling like you're not alone that's the biggest part of representation feeling like there are people out there who are just like you so i wanted to do an entire reading vlog dedicated to some of the queer young adult books that I have collected over the past year. I'm so excited. These are all like five star predictions for me. I think I'm going to absolutely love every single one of these books. So I'm excited. I am excited to read. So the first book we are going to be reading in this video is by Casey Mc... Kirsten? Kirsten? Casey McKeeston? I don't know. I kissed Cheryl Wheeler. This book was, was like crack last year for the girls. Like everybody was reading this book. Everyone was loving this book and I wanted to get to it. I wanted to get to it and I just never got to it last year. But this is my time. It is the last day of Pride when you guys are seeing this vlog and I want to read this book. I am so excited. I have such high expectations for this book. The reason why I do is I'm not one of those people who hate YA. I know a lot of people, especially on booktube, don't read Young Adult. Like I feel like there was a phase where a lot of people read Young Adult and I think there was a shift in like 2017, 2018. Definitely 2019 was like the last year like most content creators on book two really were YA focused and it's so funny because if you go look at like content from like 2015 20 even 2016 most of the people who were on book two read like mostly YA which is so crazy because I infamously have a video on my other channel where I like said I hated YA and I didn't un I didn't understand why YA was so popular at that time because I just did not understand why is what everyone was reading like grown adults and the thing is like I was just like why why does no one read why is no one reading adult books I didn't understand why no one was reading adult books and I still stood on I still stand on that idea but I think as I get older I I reach toward I like reach towards why there's something in YA that I just it gives me a feeling that adults book adult books don't give me right now. I think there's a hopefulness in YA books that I think I cling to right now. I don't know. It's just an era that I am. I'm looking for hopefulness. I'm looking for like something to believe in. And I think YA gives me that. So I am coming in here with the best of intentions because I appreciate YA. There was a time where I was just like, YA is not for me. And I'm going to be honest with you, YA contemporary and YA romance is the only two genres of YA that I read like I have no desire to read a YA fantasy a YA thriller a YA nothing I would actually do more middle grade when it comes to like fantasy stuff before I do YA YA contemporary YA romance is the only YA I am interested in I don't want to read anything else so that's what we'll be reading in this like I don't know what to tell you so I get Sarah Shara Wheeler that's what we're going to be reading first and then we are going to be reading oh we deserve monuments in this video. I am very, very excited about this. This is about black people. This is about black people in Georgia. I'm excited to read this book. I've heard nothing but good things about this book as well. 
And the last book is probably the book I am most excited about because I've just, people have been ranting, people have been raving. The Lesbiana's Guide to Catholic School. This, go co this cover is absolutely gorgeous and I'm so excited to read this book. So uh, of all the reading vlogs I have done in a really, really long time, I am probably most excited to read these three books because I genuinely believe I am going to love all three of them these books so yes let's get into it starting with i kissed cheryl wheeler there's another cover to this there's a cover to this that was like purple i mean i don't need it but like there was another cute cover to this but i think all of these covers are really good these are all really good covers anyways i will talk to you guys later peace Hello you guys. I am here to give you guys my first update on I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McGostin, the author of Red, White, and Royal Blue and One Last Stop. I used to own Red, White, and Royal Blue. But I still own Red, White, and Royal Blue because I still have not rehomed all the books that I unhauled last year. I know, I know, I know. I just have not found the time. So they're all in my unhaul closet. So sad, so sad. Anyway, so I never read Red, White, and Royal Blue. And one last stop, I honestly didn't have that much interest in. So this is actually my first book by Casey. And I will tell you what this book is about. This book is about a group of high school students. So we are dealing with young adults. They live in rural Alabama. Rural Alabama, you as someone who lived in Alabama for four years when I was in college, would they be in like rural, they're in a town, in, they're in suburban Alabama. They live in suburbia in Alabama and basically they go to this Christian school. We are following, is her name Claire? Child, what's her name? Chloe. <laughs> we are following Chloe. Chloe um, is going to be valedictorian of her school. She's, you know, a very high achiever and she doesn't get along with anyone at her school because she just thinks these people are annoying, Bible thumping bigots. So she's just like kind of to herself. She has a friend who kind of gets her, but she just wants to get out of this town, get out of Alabama. She's from California. She wants to go back to liberals, you know? And so one day she gets a note from Shara Willer, basically because Shara Willer is missing. No one knows where Shara Willer is. And so she gets a note from Shara Willer that's kind of giving clues to um, where Shara Willer would be. But then she quickly finds out that she is not the only one who has received a note when she is going to look for Shara Willer and find some clues. She finds other people who are looking for Shara Willer and that starts I Kiss Shara Willer. Shara Willer been kissing everybody. Shara Willer has been kissing everybody and basically all the people that she has kissed recently, her boyfriend, some other guy, uh, Chloe, they all receive notes basically about her whereabouts and where to find her. So now they're all going to come together to try to find Cher Willer and figure out why the hell did Cher Willer kiss her? Why the hell, kiss all of them? Why is Cher Willer missing? And that is our story. Okay, I want to lead with negativity and then I'm going to do some positivity because I have more positive things to say than negative. I don't like stories about missing people because it's really hard for me to care about the person who was missing because the person is missing. Um, if you want me to care about a missing person, you're going to have to give me flashbacks of when they weren't missing. 
so that I feel something for the character. And that's what Shara is. Shara is kind of like whimsical as in like in nature. Like she's missing and then everyone's just talking about how gorgeous and beautiful and how great she smells. Therefore, it's like she feels fictional, you know? She feels romanticized. She doesn't feel like a real person. So it's hard for me to really care about Shara as a character. So then I also don't necessarily care about all the kisses that Shara has been like, you know, bestowing on people. I just don't care because Shara is not in the book. Therefore, it's like she's just a missing, you know, perfect girl and I do not care. So that already is my issue. That's a pr me problem, by the way. I just don't like books about missing people. I know some people love books about missing people. Like this is right up their alley. So that's already like, okay, the good. The good is that this book is good. <laughs> The good is that this book is really, really enjoyable. To read this book for a Pride vlog, it is perfect. You are just hearing about a bunch of people who are queer, like of different races, of different ethnicities, of different like backgrounds, like school backgrounds. They're all just coming together. And basically what's at the root of the story is everyone trying to find their identity. And what I love about this book is oftentimes when I read books written by adults that are young adults, it feels like an adult wrote the book, if that makes sense. Like they don't feel like high school kids. These people feel like high school kids without feeling like cheesy, without feeling like an adult wrote high school school kids I feel like I'm in like a high school I am enjoying it I like the dialogue in this book I like the connections that everyone has I don't find any of the main characters annoying I find the share a mystery where she is interesting enough like interesting enough for a young adult book I'm enjoying this book I love the conversations about identity and I also love the conversations about living in a um a uh, religious like community and all of that and leaving your hometown I just think this is a really good exploration of growing up as a queer child and moving into adulthood and what comes after that and finding your identity I think this book is having really interesting conversations without trying to have interesting conversations like it's not just so dialogue written that it's just like oh it wants to talk about this it wants to talk about asexuality it wants to talk about bisexuality it's having all of those important conversations but in a way that makes for an interesting book i am enjoying the hell out of this book as you can tell i'm almost done with it so i'm enjoying this book i think we're shaping up for about a four star i will tell you in the morning because i'm about to go to bed and i'm going to try to finish it before bed but yeah i am enjoying this book cute cover i think the weakest part of this book is shara but she's the missing person so like what what really can you do um yeah i will talk to you guys in the morning okay peace that's the shot boom done Coffee, Hello, you guys. I am here to give a final update on I Kiss Cheryl Wheeler. I finished it this morning and I am going to give this book four out of five stars. I thought this book was perfectly cute. I think it is great queer representation. I think it's a feel good book. I think in the times that we live in, it is important to have young adult books that show young adults being queer and being proud of who they are and being accepted by people. And I just enjoyed this book. It was a nice fun tell. Critical thinking, I think the Shara Willer character is a little bit weak. Like, she's a little, you know, flat. She doesn't really seem like a real person. She just seems just so amazing and so lovely. And it's just like, got anything else going on? No, she don't. Um, it's just like she makes great grades. She's so beautiful and her parents are the principal and it's just like there was no depth to her as a character. So I wasn't really, I didn't really care about the romance aspect specifically with Shara. Like I enjoyed just the fact that it was a sapphic romance. I have stuff all over me. It was a sapphic romance. That's what I enjoyed about it. And this Chloe character, you kind of like being herself 
even though everyone around her is telling her who she should be. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed Chloe's relationship with her moms. So yeah, I enjoyed the book four out of five stars. It definitely lived up to the hype. I heard a lot of people say good things about it and I enjoyed it. So four out of five. I'm going to move on to We Deserve Monuments because that's just what I'm in the mood to read. I don't know. So we're just gonna move on to that book, okay? Peace. Hello, you guys. Okay, we have some housekeeping things to discuss. Okay, so I am at the end of We Deserve Monuments. I am on page 173. So I have like 120 pages left to go in this book. And I need to tell you guys my initial updates on this book but we are in crunch time i have 24 hours to finish this book and also finish the lesbian lesbianas guide to catholic school i want to read both of these books in 24 hours of course i can finish this book i just gotta hunker down and finish this book and then i have to literally for like five hours straight how long is this book Ooh. For about five hours straight, I have to read this book. I'm gonna try to, I think I can get it done in four. I think five is too much. I can get it done three and a half, four. I have to finish this book because I have no time because book club is coming up and I like to read the book club pick a couple days before book club like I like to start it so I have to get started on the book club pick in order to finish the book club pick the way I like to do it and take my notes and just have fun I like to have fun with the book club pick I don't like the book club pick to bring any stress to my life so let me first start by telling you what we deserve monument in so in this book, we are following a girl who is relocating from DC to Georgia because her grandmother is sick, her mom's mom is sick and is dying. So they're going to Georgia. She does not want to go because she likes her life in DC. And she's also not very close to this grandmother, but they all go, they're all going to move there. She is biracial. She was closer to her other grandmother. She's not closer to this grandmother. So she gets to Georgia and like, she immediately does not like it because she is gay. She is a lesbian and she's already getting remarks from people. She has a nose ring. Her grandmother says little snide remarks to her. She's not close to the grandmother, you know. they. She doesn't like the way she dresses. She doesn't like the way she looks. So she's already over all of this but when she starts going to school she actually meets two people who she becomes friends with she has a girl named why do i want to call her simone why do i want to say her name is simone you got simone and you got jade jade is a white girl simone is a black girl jade is part of one of the most affluent families in this little rural georgia town then you got simone who is black and you know she's dealing with all types of stuff simone and our main character their lives are kind of not that great like our main character her grandma is sick she's not really that close to her mom like she wants to be she's not really that close to her grandma she don't like her home life and then you got the simone simone character her her brother is dead like she's been dealing with a lot of deaths in her family and she's been going through a lot of stuff like that so they bond over that there's kind of you know a little bit of romance going on between Simone and our main girl but then you got Jade Jade to be the white character actually is kind of interesting Jade's dad recently got remarried after her mom was murdered now no one knows how her mom was killed if she was killed if she was murdered but that is the talk of the town now jay believes that it was her dad who actually murdered her mom and then got remarried and you know it was a whole conspiracy so that's like a truth that she lives with she lives with her stepmom and her dad but she thinks they are the reason why her mom is dead and like it's a little kind of a little mystery going on with that but there's also like something just really weird about this town our main character has noticed since she's been living here there's a lot of things that go on that a lot of people don't talk about there's like racial divides and she's just like something is off and something happened here and I do not know what it is she also has like secrets in her own family her grandmother and her mom are not that close and she's trying to get closer to her grandmother because she knows her grandma is going to die. She's basically trying to lean in. She's like, you know what? Since I got to be in Georgia, since I got to be living with my grandma who don't like me, who doesn't like that I'm a lesbian, all this stuff, I 
might as well lean in. She's gonna be dead soon anyway. So she's like, she wants to learn everything there is to learn about her grandmother and her family and her grandpa who's not alive anymore. She wants to learn everything. But as she's getting to know her grandma, it actually opens up more questions and she's questioning what happened between her mom and her grandma that caused them not to be as close because the reason why our main character is not close to her grandmother is because they never came to visit her and she's trying to figure out what the hell is that and why have people not been like why why haven't they been close so this is just a book about queer individuals being black um and basically the secrets and lies and stuff that are told you want to know what i appreciate about we deserve monuments and sarah willer i like this idea of these queer novels for kids taking place in the south oftentimes because of legislation and stuff like that people are like the minute i graduate i'm gonna move like up north or i'm gonna go to california i'm gonna go someplace with like some liberals so i don't have to deal with like certain oppression certain legislation and i often push back on that idea because a lot of people can't do that a lot of people are going to grow up in conservative areas and I don't think the message to send to people is, hey, move. The message is a call to action. Like, you can do something about this. Things don't always have to be the way that they are. And they're going to take time. But you can turn where you live into a place that is progressive and accepting and all that. And so I appreciate about these novels with both of these main characters moving to down south and basically them realizing the beauty that is around them them trying to figure out like you know what there is hope here and there are people here who are just like me and i had all of these you know preconceived notions about these people but there's people just like me who need my help who need my community you can build community within these places i think that is so important that's what i appreciate the most about we deserve monuments and sarah willard that idea that you can't just leave the queer people of the south there to die like for example florida like florida seems like a wasteland like oh my gosh they're running that place into the ground but there are so many people in florida who need people to speak up for them and they need community and they need places they can go and they need refuge and so you just can't forget about them like oop, you should live someplace else y'all should move to new york like no you can't he can't say that you know those people deserve to have peace where they live and that needs to be the change so anyways i am enjoying this book well enough um i'm gonna finish it soon i have to finish it like now and then we're going to move in to the lesbianist guide to catholic school which i am very very excited to read so that's the good thing about the fact that i have to read all of these books so goddamn quickly i'm excited to read them the thing is like whoa a lot of reading is going on in such a short period of time in my life. You got the book club pick, you got these two books, then you got Sarah Wheeler, which I finished yesterday. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. But I'm going to get it done, and I will talk to you guys when We Deserve Monuments is done. Okay, peace. Hello, you guys. I am back in literally the exact same spot that I left you guys at. I need to give you guys my final thoughts on We Deserve Monuments. I'm going to give this book four out of five stars. I honestly don't have any real critiques of it. The star that it's taken away is just like in order for me to give a book five stars I just have to like fully like just be like this is absolutely amazing. But this is a four star book. I really have no critiques on it. I really love the idea of We Deserve Monuments. If you remember when I read when we were beautiful I was talking about how so many things are lost when so much injustice is done to certain people and this book kind of picks up on that thought that so many people deserve to be remembered and so many people are forgotten and the people who we choose to remember don't deserve to be remembered the most mundane regular nasty ugly white people have statues all over this world and then you have black people who have also done some remarkable things but also black people who have just lived regular lives but overcome so much and done so many small amazing things who deserve to be remembered and that's what this book is about remembering 
black people remembering queer people remembering your family and all of that so i really do enjoy the message of this book i just love the fact that there are young adult books made like this i loved it we had a character who was just an unapologetic lesbian girl. It was good. It had some good sapphic romance stuff in there. Um, You want to know what? I'm actually going to be honest with you. It ended kind of too soon. I could have gotten like 50 more pages. 50 more pages in this book. So I rarely say that. But I think the book actually ended too soon. Okay, so the last book that we are going to read is the Lesbian. Why can't I say that? Lesbianas? guide to catholic school i when i have been wanting to read this book for so long this is the moment this is my moment that's how i know i can read it in these next few hours because it is my moment i have my bookmark this is literally when they were giving out michelle obama bookmarks when i bought this book i have my bookmark i'm ready to go i am ready to break this book down up into like I would usually break it up into 50 but I think I'm going to break it into 60 each you ask what that means what that means is when I read the book me reading the book I take my bookmark and I go to page 60 whatever chapter is closest to 60 so for this one chapter 5 page 63 I put my bookmark in there sometimes if I don't have a bookmark I dog ear it but I have a bookmark and I close the book and I start from where I've read and I do not do anything until I get to page 60 because one thing about me I am goal oriented everything about me is about goals 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 that's what keeps me going like proving to myself I can do certain things so I go to page 60 and I don't eat I don't do anything I do use the bathroom because save your kidneys um, but nothing that I desire I get until I reach page 60 because I can do it and guess what if you want to eat really quick You better read faster, and I know that is not healthy <laughs> You should not have to punish yourself to do this, but guess what the work gets done That's how I get through reading That's how I don't get distracted because I tell myself whatever I want to distract myself with I can do after the 60 pages because after the 60 pages you can do whatever the hell you want so that's what i do so it's already on page 63 and i start reading so i basically most people use bookmarks to like put where they are i use bookmarks to say where i want to be that's my thought and then i move on so 60 pages is now like the standard so i'll go to page 120 the next time and that's how i break it up and that's how i try to finish love this cover it's my brand um speaking of my brand a video that i want to do for july is an actual video idea that you guys gave me i have thoughts i have ideas and actually this would have fit perfectly in that video but it also fits perfectly in this one so i am going to keep on reading i'm gonna give myself a little bit of a break um i need to go to cvs i always got stuff i need to i need to go to cvs and scrapbook my um africa trip whenever i go someplace like that i think is like worth like really big deal like i went to kenya i like to get like a small scrapbook and then i like to print out pictures from that trip and just have so like my idea is to have like a bunch of scrapbooks from places that i visited throughout my life so when i'm like 80 years old i'll have like maybe 20 scrapbooks of like places that i've been things that i've done so i don't know i want to do that but i gotta read first this one the national this was a national book award finalist so good for sonora reyes so yeah i'm going to do that and I will see you guys later. Okay, so we are doing good in this video. We had two four-star reads. So I feel good about that. Nothing, um, I don't know if I'm going to do a mid-year freakout video. But if I were to do a mid-year freakout video, what I would say in there, so maybe I don't, I can just say it in here. I can't name 10 books I've read this year that I just have loved. If the year ended right now, I'd read about 80 books. I don't think I have a top 10 I don't. I think I have five books. Amari, uh, 
unfairly highly suspicious and unfairly cute zoe washington and maybe black cake alice's island yeah maybe someone else's shoes like that's and i'm like literally like searching i'm searching to give it those searching i don't know like i don't know i enjoyed the last event like i'm trying to think when i think of 16 and pregnant i enjoy like everything is like a yeah i enjoy except for like amari highly suspicious and zoe everything else is like a yeah i enjoyed it sure but like excited what are some book club books no i didn't love the book club books maybe white out i did enjoy white out like i just i don't know what is happening this year last year i hated a bunch of books i was reading just a bunch of books that i hated now this year as i'm going through and i'm reading more books that i own and less newer books so i'm reading like back my own back catalog I'm like yeah I see why I purchased this book it's fine but nothing I'm passionate about so in July my goal is to get five five star reads in July five five star reads I think that's gonna be like the overall thesis of July getting five five star uh books will I be successful boy will we find out boy will we find out but that is going to be my goal and every video idea is going to be around that fact so we have summer ween i already have my summer ween tbr that goes in line with five star reviews because the books that i'm choosing for that which i am taking on a lot in that summer ween video like that summer ween video i'm taking on a lot i don't know if i'm going to vlog every single day in summer ween as in like post a video every single day i don't feel like anyone really does that Ex like most people don't do that now i feel like that was more like pandemic-y you could like put up a vlog every single day but like that's a that's a that's a high ask <laughs> um these days um but i guess i could maybe i could go live every single day and do some sprints i've never done sprints with you guys because every time i'm like no one wants to do sprints maybe that's what i'll do maybe i'll sprint once a day that's a hard ask to you anyways but i already have my tbr for summer ween which you'll find that out in the summer ween episode then i have the first video for the first month of july i want to make that goes back to my brand the books i want to read for my brand and then i have some literary fiction i want to bite my teeth into next month just i'm searching for five five stars five five stars is the thesis for july anyways i say all that to say i think this next one is going to be a five star i do i do i think this next one is going to be a five star not to say that we deserve monuments and i kiss sarah willer we're not five star reads like i enjoyed them like they could have been five star reads they just like don't evoke this deep emotion in me but nothing i've read evokes this deep emotion in me like they work they work i get them i like them you know you know anyway i will talk to you guys later peace with all my blurriness hey ray do you want to say hi to the vlog do you guys want to see how greedy he is watch this this is the drawer where I keep all of his food and stuff. Watch how greedy he is. And so I just grab him like a shrimp. Like he's eyeing this. He's so greedy. Keep hand sanitizer closed when you're dealing with the turtle. Salmonella is real. Now look at him. Look at how greedy he is. There he is. Yes, he puts the whole thing in his mouth. He likes to pull these little plants up. I need to clean his tank. I'll do it on Wednesday. He likes to pull these little things up. That's like his excitement. There's another one there. But yeah, he's not getting any more. That was his snack for today. But anyways, he's greedy. You're greedy. 
Say hi, Ray. And then these little things are supposed to stick to his tank, but he likes to do this weird thing where he likes to go under it. It's fun for him. I don't know. But yeah. Hello, you guys. I am so sorry for how like bad this looks. Like, oh my God. This looks terrible. Terrible, terrible. Let's see. Who, you guys, it is later at night. I have been reading for the past three hours, but we are almost to the finish line. I didn't feel like I needed to like update you guys at like the halfway point because I was just like, eh, eh. Um, it's not very necessary. So in this book, we are following a Hispanic girl. She is in high school and she is moving to a different high school. A lot of bad stuff happened to her at her old high school. Her brother kept getting in trouble at her old high school. So they were like, you know what? It's time for y'all to get something new. So they go to a new high school. You guys, wait one second. I have to get my food. I'm getting food. Hold up. Yes. I like your little setup over oh, here. Oh, thank you. That's so cute. There you are. Thank you so much. Have a good night, okay? You too. So like, end the book. Okay, so basically they have to go to a new school and they're starting at this new Catholic school. So our character, she is a lesbian and basically at this new school, she does not want to tell anyone that she is a lesbian. She wants to pretend to be straight because she got outed at her last school by her best friend. And so she's basically, basically this whole story is about her being a lesbian at a Catholic school and dealing with everything that comes with trying not to get outed, trying not to get, ex like she doesn't want to get exposed by anyone she's trying to keep things you know keep things nice and secure she wants this to go well she also has a really bad relationship with her mother because her mother only seems focused on her brother and she doesn't understand what that is they also have an etsy business where they do like jewelry and that's kind of keeping them um, afloat they are struggling financially her dad got um deported and so they're struggling financially they just have a lot going on she's at this catholic school her brother's still getting in trouble and sneaking around she don't know what that is about and that is our story her you know just trying to be young and an, be a young adult queer person in a not so friendly space for queer people this book is so much fun this book is so much fun i'm enjoying the relationship between all of the characters we have a character named jamal who is in this story the brother her brother is so good i like what they're saying about the mom and the daughter situation they're also she has a like there's a relationship going on with her father that's really interesting i'm just enjoying it i don't know what more to say I didn't feel like I needed to stop in. It's like one of those books where you're just cheesing the whole time. Cheesing the whole time. It's so good. It's so well written. I'm enjoying the hell out of this book. So yeah, we're shaping up for another like four star read. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just being stricter. I don't think this is going to be a five star read. I know when I read a five star book. Like I just know. But these books are perfectly good. All three of these books are going to get four stars. And like go read them they're amazing but i don't know what it is about me where i can't give a book more than five stars these days i mean four stars these days i don't know what it is like i'm waiting for that feeling and i don't want to say that because these books are so damn good by the way when the um lady came and said she likes my setup she's talking about my um steering wheel so my why is your car called daisy well I do love Princess Peach and I hate Daisy. Like Mario, hate Daisy. Yeah, that's a chop. Hate that hoe. But I, The Great Gatsby is one of my favorite books of all time and Daisy Buchanan is one of my favorite characters in all of literature. And so when I got this car, it reminded me of The Great Gatsby 
and I wanted to name it Daisy after Daisy and everything that happened with Daisy running someone over like it was just it's a whole thing I can't drive it's a whole thing and so my car I like to put a bunch of like daisies like on my um antenna I have a daisy on top of that then I have a little daisy flower a little daisy clips like it's it's my thing but that's what she was talking about my little setup anyways I'll talk to you guys later peace hello you guys i am here to wrap up the video the lesbianas guide to catholic school i am going to give a four 4.5 out of five stars i do think it is the most enjoyable book that i read this video but that's actually saying a lot because i don't think i've done a vlog where it was just like 10 10 10s across the board but that was this vlog and that is the perfect way to in pride so in this video we read three books we read i kissed cheryl willer and i gave this book four out of five stars this book is really good i see why a lot of people gravitated towards it last year i'm happy i didn't skip it i'm happy i got my hands on it and i'm happy i purchased it when i did because i think if i would not have purchased it last year i probably would have never gotten to this like i didn't get to red white and royal blue in one last stop but i'm happy i purchased it and just let it sit there see sometimes buying books buying too many books comes in handy because oftentimes i'll just forget about books like if once the time is up and like I feel like you know the train has left the station I'll just never read books that I actually was interested in because I didn't buy them and if it doesn't show up on clearance I just wouldn't pick this book and I don't think I've seen this book on clearance so luckily I read got it read it loved it next we deserve monuments this is like the deepest book that we read here and I 100% enjoyed the message I enjoyed what this book had to say and I'm actually gonna take off a star only because it's actually not long enough. I think this book could have really been longer, honestly. Like, when it ended, I was like, that's it? That's it? Like, no, I gave this book four out of five stars. I really liked it, and my only complaint is it wasn't long enough. I could have had more. And the last book is The Last Mountain's Guide to Catholic School, which I just told you I'm going to give this book 4.5 out of five stars so with that being said i will be rereading rereading i'll be reading from all three of these authors again their next books i will be picking up because those were excellent and it didn't feel like even though i had to read the lesbians guide to catholic school like y'all didn't see my whole day well y'all didn't see my whole day but it's been a whole day since i started reading that book it didn't feel that way like it just felt easy breezy like it was a good read so you know what that is it i thank you all for watching you want to know when i say i thank you all for watching it reminds me of the doodle bops did y'all watch the doodle bops we're the doodle bops we're the doodle bops and we thank you oh yeah i don't even remember that's the words but the doodle bops used to be my favorite show i used to go over to my auntie's house in the summer and or like during breaks I either went to her house during breaks and I went to the, her house in, in the summer and she had a huge like TV and like she would be working and I would be watching the doodle bops oh my god that is history I love the doodle bops um yeah <laughs> they used to always have to like get to a show at the end of the episode and then at the end of the episode it would be footage from like their live shows why did I never try to go to a doodle bops live show because I think I enjoyed the doodle bops past the time I should have enjoyed the doodle bops like maybe I was too big to like the doodle bops and maybe that's why I didn't go to the show because a lot of the people in the crowd I thought were babies I'm like there's babies in the crowd and I was like seven <laughs> i felt like i was like seven i was definitely in school already i was in like first grade because after the doodle bops i would then turn it to like nick tunes or something some nick like and like guts no if ands or buts these kids got guts and like double dare 2000 or double dare 3000 double dare, dare 2000 would come on and legend of the hidden temple it was like i had a whole block so like the doodle bops the higley town heroes all of that stuff used to come on stanley do y'all remember stanley all the like those shows used to come on in the morning on disney channel then i would turn over to like it wasn't maybe they were on nickelodeon i don't think it was on nick though 
Because like when Rugrats and stuff, there was like another channel. Cause my girl, my auntie had good cable. She had good cable. And there was like another channel where like all of these shows like used to come on. Cause I think they were already like done by then. Like, and I would watch Guts. I would watch Double Dare and I would watch Legend of the Hidden Temple. And that's what I would watch. That would be my block. And then by the time I watch those shows, Disney Channel will be back showing like the grown people show so I could watch That's So Raven, Lizzie McGuire, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I could watch my stories. That that was the block. So I would watch the kitty shows I liked in the morning, the Doodle Bop, Stanley, Hitting Town Heroes, you know the girls, the girls. And then I would go into my reality kick, Guts, Double Dare, Legend of the Hidden Temple. And then I would be like, oh, it's time to be a Disney Channel girl, which I was. And, you know, and so, yeah, that's what I used to do. That's what I used to do. Mm. <laughs> Bye, you guys. I will see you guys in the next